Сейчас Okay, good afternoon. Thank you all for joining. Um, I believe I didn't, I'm not sure if Patty wanted to make a comment. Um, give me just one second to pull up um, a, a marketplace account. But I wanted to thank you all for joining um, the advanced session of Overdrive Advantage. Um, today, we're really going to focus on um, digging a little bit more beyond the basics. I want to talk about one of the suggestions was um, advantage curation and what that looks like. I want to dig in a little bit further on cost per CERC or CPC, if anyone utilizes that. Um, some upcoming features that we're going to have available um, are Libby equivalent to um, recommend to library. And so um, it's not live yet, but I can preview a little bit about what that looks like in terms of um, a selector, but also from an end user. Um, if I can figure it out, I'm gonna share some videos um, that hopefully the sound comes through, um, but give me just one second to pull up an Advantage account and then we will get started. wanted to choose an Advantage account um, that's a bit more advanced. Um, so hopefully we see some of those holds and other information. So hang on just one second, forgive me for the delay. Okay. Okay, so... Um, Um, and a little bit of a preview and to notify me. Oh, Patty, you're muted. I was going to say, you're breaking up. <laughs> Sorry, is that a little better? It seems a little bit, it seems a little bit better, but I just, I just okay. wanted to let you know. Thank Sorry. you. <laughs> no, that's okay. I appreciate that. I even went back, so hopefully, but again. Um, Okay, so beyond curation and CPC, um, we can get a little bit more into um, the future um, features that are coming. Is there anything else in particular that wanted to be discussed today? And see a chat, so I'm gonna- I wanted to say maybe if you could talk about shelf talkers a little bit. Sure, sure. Um, so that really ties into curation really well. Um, so let's start there. There um, and then we'll build on to cost per circ and then um, try to get everything in in an hour. So feel free um, to chat in questions. I should have said um, from the beginning, introduce myself and my colleagues. So I apologize if I don't know you. My name is Kristen Price. I am your account manager here at Overdrive, where all of our CLS and other New York uh, consortia and public library systems. I'm also partnered by uh, my colleague, Claire, who is your digital content librarian. Um, and I may defer to her on some of the curation things. That's what Claire actually helps for for the system um, homepage. Some of those collections are inspired by Claire, um, but her and her team really build these great lists. I will also share some of those resources so we don't have to reinvent the wheel. So um, one kind of document in particular that I want to start sharing um, is something that Claire and her team actually helped put together. And I will share this after the fact as well. Um, but it's an all you need to know um, about Advantage curation. So um, to start back, we are talking about the featured collections that are showing up on your OverDrive homepage, which is rcls.overdrive.com as well in Libby and OverDrive app. So um, for the time being. <laughs> um, so right now, anything that you want to highlight to your patrons, by default, the consortium is seeing all of the same collections. So regardless what member library you are at, they're seeing um, patrons are seeing those same collections. You as an Advantage selector do have the opportunity to curate collections specifically for your home users. So we know as part of a consortium, you live in different areas, you have de different demographics and interests, et cetera. Maybe you wanna highlight a local program that is specific to your community, or maybe you have more sci-fi readers than the rest of RCLS, things like that. Um, you have the opportunity to 
curate your own um, featured collections. And this would be available only to your home users. Um, when they sign in with their your local library card, that is how we determine what collections they're seeing. Um, so a little bit about, I kind of explained what curation is, um, some tips about it. Um, and this includes screenshots, how to log in, um, some little FAQs, and then step-by-step -step on how to curate certain collections. If you want to curate based off a search, uh, if you want to do it based off a pre-created list, if you want to um, put in a certain list of ISBNs of titles that you'd like to feature, etc. Um, some great ideas that I know actually some member here have done is maybe they want to feature some fan books just to their community. They have put a, a list together. Um, we'll talk about cost per circle a little bit later, but that is a lending model that is not available uh, to be shared with the rest of the system. Any titles that you enable as cost per circle are limited to just your home users. So that could be a collection that you want to highlight. Hey, just available to you, you know, no wait list or things like that. So that's something to think about. Um, magazines are a great idea. I know that's on the home page. Um, we really recommend curating things like trending topics, you know, seasonal collections, really whatever's engaging with your patrons. Also bringing in things from your physical space. If you have you know, an end cap, a bookshelf that your readers know to go to look for, bring that into your digital collection, do a little cross promotion. Um, you can include a full description, especially if you're doing programming. Maybe you have a local author that's doing a, a talk via Zoom. Highlight their books and say, tune in Tuesday night for live discussion with the author. Do some programming and marketing back to your physical programs, things like that. Um, but I'm gonna get into marketplace and so let me make sure I'm sharing the right screen. Okay, so um, once you're in marketplace in your Advantage account, um, there is a tab that set specifically says curate. Um, and we have a few options here. We have standard curation, lucky day, which we're not gonna get into today, but it's similar to um, anything like that in your um, digital collection, maybe it could be a, or a physical collection, maybe it could be a conversation for another day, we could talk about that. And we have organized published collections. So the first step is actually to go to organized published collections. And there is a pop up at the top and I will note um, it doesn't necessarily have to be your homepage. you can also curate collections for your users in your children's room or um, the kit uh, the YA room the magazine. Um, let me actually just pull up rcls.overdrive.com so you can see what I mean. Um, so you can curate for any of these tabs here, um, in addition to, you know, here are some of the collections on the home page, but maybe you don't want just added at the top for your users. Maybe you want that lower on the page. Curation for Advantage can even be just rearranging some of the existing collections, um, putting something that might resonate with your local patrons more at the top of the page. Um, okay, so I'm going back to Marketplace. Um, and I can see right here, um, of course, I picked an Advantage account that is doing curation, so it's already turned on. Um, but in this box right here, and I'll show it on the PDF. Let me find it. Sorry. Where is it? Is it at the top? Oh, yeah, first question, excuse me. Um, so when you log into your Advantage account, um, you go to that Curate tab, you'll get this pop up. And let me see if I can make this a little bit bigger so you can see it. That says, do you want to customize the collections for your Advantage users? So it says right now you're using the consortium collection, but do you want to maintain this yourself? So you have the option to edit and rearrange um, the consortium collections. Again, it'll only be for your users. You have the options to create new collections. Um, and we have two types. We have a curated collection, which is more of a hand pick. Those may be 
the seasonal picks, New York Times bestsellers, specific titles. And then we also have something called an automated list. And that could be a bit more general. Maybe you just want to do adult ebooks sorted by popularity. So most popular adult ebooks or something like that. And then as you place orders, or really anyone places orders because it does pull in those consortium copies and titles too. Um, that way it's kind of automatically updating. So for example, that just added, that's an automated collection. As orders are placed, new titles are showing up in that collection. Whereas a curated collection is more hand-picked titles. Um, maybe it's a certain author, a seasonal read, et cetera. So the first prompt would be, do you want to maintain this? Now in this Advantage account, this library actually currently does. Um, so their only option would be to turn it off. Um, so this is a great way to know maybe if you're already doing it. Um, so in this case, it says you're maintaining your that means if the consortium adds a new title, a new collection, it will not automatically be featured for your Advantage users because you are maintaining it yourself. You have opted to do it yourself. Um, alternatively, if you do want a little refresh, you can change this to no. Wait a couple minutes, then turn it back on and it'll kind of refresh those consortium collections. But a big disclaimer here is if you do turn on Advantage Curation, no new collections from the consortium will be updated. It says, hey, as the Advantage user, I'm managing this myself. Okay, so that's just something to keep in mind. Um, and from this page, uh, they do have the option rearranging is as simple as dragging and dropping. So maybe I want your next great read more at the top of the list. Um, I can also see where it's published, et cetera. Now, um, Claire, feel free to chime in if I miss anything or things like that. Um, but say I do turn on Advantage Curation, my next start is to either create a list or create an automated list. So I can either hit Create List from here, or I can go to Standard Creation and start from there. Again, I have the option to create a list. Um, you can also see previously published lists. So again, if you want to see something from the consortium or somewhere else, you can see kind of all those lists and what's included there. It also notes if it's automated or curated. So most of the lists on the consortium homepage are automated, meaning as new titles are purchased, if they meet that criteria, they'll automatically be updated. Kristen, we uh, just had a question and I, I, it oh, says, well, turning off custom curation restore the automatically updating consortium lists. Claire, do you know? Yes, yeah, so if you turn off Advantage Curation, you will go back to whatever the uh, consortium has for its curation. The one caveat that I would add is if you work to create your own custom list for your Advantage Curation, you're gonna wanna save those before you turn off your Advantage Curation, otherwise you will lose that. So the two ways you can do that are either to Make sure you save your list as a draft and make sure it's not published and that will, will save it for you. Or you can create a worksheet of what you have in that list and you can use it when you, if you wanna make it again down the road or anything like that. But that's the one caveat is just, you don't wanna lose progress you've made as with your advantage creation, but yes, it will go back to consortium curation and be up to date. That's why sometimes people will um, update their advantage creation for a little while and then say, no, I'm done. Or this event's over, this, this campaign is over. So I'm gonna go back to uh, consortium curation. Okay, and real quick, um, Claire may have you stay off mute just to walk me through this, make sure I'm doing it right. Um, so if I did want to save a list, so say these are all the that I currently have, maybe I want to make sure my too hot to hold stays around, even if I turn um, curation off to refresh and back on, I can click on this. And then I have a few options here. So if you click, this is an already published one. We will we'll see how we get to this in a moment. I'm going to create one from scratch, but we can see um, the description, um, things like that. But down here, oh, this is an automated collection. Hang on one second. Let me find a curated one. Okay, so maybe it's classics. And you have the option, you can either create a draft 
And so you can just hit this button, it'll save in the drafts, and then you can republish it when you turn Advantage Curation back on. Or as Claire noted, um, you could just get the details from here. Um, once it's in draft mode, you can do that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the first option would be the recommendation is to create a draft. Let's see if that does it. Um, okay. And then you can hit create worksheet to get that list of titles if you want to save it for later or just have it to recreate it in your print collection or something like that. Um, okay. So let me go back to um, a standard collection and just walk you through. So um, I turned on Advantage Curation. I want to get started. So the first option, create a standard list. And you have that option right here if you want to make a curated or an automated. I'm going to start with an automated because I think it's a little bit more straightforward. Um, so I'm going to hit automated. And I'm going to label it something that's helpful add a description and hit next. And then from here, I have a few options. By default, um, publish, um, which I think everyone typically wants to do. Um, one of my favorite options is the availability uh, filter. So you can show all titles. Um, that's a great tool if you especially are curating a collection, you're handpicking them, I want them all to be available. Um, you can show available titles first. So that way, when patrons are going to that homepage, they're not seeing waitlist, 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 but rather as the title is checked out, it kind of moves to the back of the list. So the borrow is featured at the top, the titles that are available are at the front of the list. So that is this option, show all titles, but show available first. Um, you also have the option to only show available titles. Now I will note with Libby, if things drop to just a few titles, maybe there's only five or so remaining, um, the collection is gonna be hidden. Um, I think that it needs a minimum of 10 titles. Is that right, Claire? Okay, 10 titles um, to kind of show, um, pop up as a curated collection on the Libby homepage. So just something to keep in mind. I typically recommend show all titles, but show available first, because sometimes people do want to place holds. Um, otherwise, you can just show all titles or show only available titles. In this case, I'm going to do show all titles, show available first. You can also sort it by title. You can sort it by newly added, which is great for that just added collection. You can sort it by most popular, whether it's at a global uh, level, so across all OverDrive public libraries, or just specifically RCLS. So maybe I just want titles that are popular amongst our patrons. Um, you can limit by the format. So maybe I just want it to be eBooks. You could do audience. Um, and then you can do specific BISEC searches. So this is really great. Maybe I just want, um, I think we had mentioned sci-fi. Yeah, science fiction, <laughs> I should type it out. Um, and then I can pick any of these. Maybe I wanna focus on um, the action sci-fi and the crime and mystery. Um, maturity level. So. Typically, um, we recommend keeping this blank, um, but if you want to make sure that no racy romance are uh, popping up, you can pick general adult and it'll essentially be all adult, but, but those mature ones. Um, and you can also um, set a number of titles. So right now, again, I just did eBooks, two sci-fi categories, and at the bottom I can see there's 187 currently eligible titles. So that's awesome. Maybe I only want a collection of 50 though. So it's gonna sort by the most popular 50. You don't have to put a maximum number in, but just if it's an unwieldy list, if it's a few thousand, if you're doing something more general like just adult fiction, maybe you wanna limit it to just a couple hundred or something. Sometimes it could be overwhelming if it's too big. 
Um, and then once you kind of set all your desired preferences, um, you have options of where you want to publish the uh, collection. So do I want to put it on the home page? Do I want to put it just under the ebook section, um, et cetera? So that's the publishing location. And then all that's left is to publish. Um, typically, collections may populate within about 30 minutes. Um, it depends on the traffic on the site, et cetera. Um, we say everything could take up to 24 hours, um, but it's usually about 30 minutes that published curated collections will appear to patrons, OK? So any questions about automated collections? OK. Pretty um, straightforward, but an awesome tool, especially a great way to put new collections on the homepage and not have to regularly manage them. If you do something more like a subject or just added or most popular audiobooks, something like that, as um, usage happens, as purchases happen, et cetera, those lists will always kind of be growing and expanding any titles that meet um, that criteria are going to populate in that list. Okay. So I'm going to just hit the button um, and we'll go back and look at a curated list. There is a quick question. Um, for options, did you mean like the. I think you explained it. Oh, okay. you, ex you explained it as you before you. I asked that question before you explained sort by. Okay, perfect. Um, okay, so I'm not frozen, am I? Still moving? Okay. You're starting um, to get frozen. <laughs> I saw the little unstable. I purposely changed my Wi-Fi, hoping it would be good. I've had problems at the office, so I purposely stayed home today, and now I'm having issues, so I apologize. Um, next up is curated list. So again, and I love that we put the little disclaimer to help you remember. So again, automated are those auto pop populating lists based on specific criteria, whether it's newly added, most popular audiobooks, et cetera. Whereas curated are more hand-picked titles with a theme, gone girl read-alikes, holiday reads, you know, things like that. Um, so in this case, I'm gonna do it. And um, for those that are similar with uh, creating carts or things like that, very similar experience here. I recommend pinning it so you can easily add titles to this collection. Um, and then you can go ahead and hit next. Okay. And um, to start, very similar settings here, right? We had talked about those availability filters. Um, this one's slightly different because we're hand picking. We have a few more um, sorting options. So custom could be, maybe you're doing a series and you want them to appear as book one, two, three, four, et cetera. You could do a custom sort and have them in order. Once we add some titles, you can drag and drop the order. Um, you can also do those same ones, most popular, newly added title. I also really like random. Um, if you're doing something a bit more general and you don't care about the order, have a different order show up every time someone goes to the page. Um, so that random order is basically going to refresh. I think that's really great for these curated collections, unless you're doing something um, specific like a series order. Um, but this way, people are seeing something new every time they go to the site. Um, especially if you're not going to manage it too often. Um, this is a great way to, for friends to see new content. So I like random sort. Um, and then our only options left are to add some titles. So um, you can use the same search filters that you would to make a cart. So whether that's an advanced search, um, whether that's using the search bar at the top, um, you can also... Claire, what are some ideas of how you might find titles? Uh, so Patty made a great point in the comments that you can go to our collection development list and use some of the pre-created lists that we have. The sky's the limit, <laughs> really. Um, and I love this because Claire's team put these together and there are probably tens of thousands of lists that are actively managed. So it's great if you come up with an idea for a curated collection or have something specific for your community. 
but why reinvent the wheel, right? Um, so some of my favorite areas on here are those read-alikes, um, are trending topics or seasonal. So all of these open directly into Marketplace. Let's start with trending topics, right? So these are a handful of lists. Um, one thing that we talked about in the last one, it's award season. Let's talk about all the books that inspired the Oscar nominations or things like that. Great collection to have featured now. Um, some other things may be, you know, um, recent series stars. Um, we have regularly updated, so like uh, celebrity memoirs. Um, one thing that's really great, we're going to talk about cost per circ, um, but we have a whole section of ideas of what to use in cost per circ. So these are great ideas for what to add, but also what to feature. So in particular, ban books available in CPC. What a great way to discover those titles and add them as CPC and then turn around and feature them as a collection. Um, so that's a great idea. And then we also have all these book clubs. So maybe I wanna do um, a Reese Witherspoon collection. So I'm gonna click on Reese Witherspoon Reads. It opens up directly into Marketplace. And real quick, I just wanna reiterate, we were in our resource center. So that's resources.overdrive.com. Anyone on staff can access it. It is a link um, under Marketplace under the support tab. You can access it there too if you forget, um, but you don't have to go through Marketplace. I also wanted to note with curation, if you have other staff helping, you do not have to have access to purchase in order to curate. So maybe you have a summer intern helping. Maybe you have one idea, and I think this was a local um, Cleveland, we're in Cleveland, Ohio, local Cleveland library did it. They, um, do internships with local high schools and people that, you know, help part-time, things like that. They let her create a collection of YA titles. And so it's like from, um, I think her name was Cece and it was like Cece's picks for the summer. And so that's something that's really cool that she could promote to all of her friends. Um, but also just, you know, giving a little love. So, um, great idea, but wanted to let you know that marketplace users do not have to have access to, um, they don't need access to reports. They don't need access to purchase invoices, anything like that to curate. It can specifically be for your marketing team, your frontline staff, things like that. Um, but one, uh, little tip. So we have almost 250 titles that Reese has recommended. Um, and they're all probably bestsellers, um, but an awesome little tip. Um, so we're in marketplace, but we're not in curate, right? We just opened them. Um, this is, um, how I can add to a cart. It's definitely a great idea to see if I don't own any of these, but a really great workaround. And this is on that PDF that I will share is right in the URL here. If we highlight one copy, one user and metered access and type in curate instead and hit enter, it's automatically going to take that same list, but put it in the curation section. So um, it's my, my wheel still spinning. Okay, here we are. I can see my test uh, list on the other side. It automatically filters to things that are already in the collection. So you can see it was previously 249, but now there's only 200. That's because there's 200 of those 240. Freezing a little bit, am I back? Okay, thanks Claire. Um, so it automatically um, adjusts and it's just showing those 200 titles currently available in your collection. I forgot to mention that as well. So curation automatically defaults to what's already available. So there's no titles that are gonna populate under that curate tab that you don't own. They're currently in RCLS's, your own Advantage account, shared from others. It's already in that digital collection, okay? So curation is only working off things you already own, which is great. Um, so we filtered and from here, we could just select all 200 titles and add it to the list. Such a quick way to create a curated collection and I can easily publish it from there. 
So you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Please feel free to use that resource center. There's great ideas. Also, Claire and her team, um, a partner that used to do this, used to come up with really creative curation ideas, but they didn't have time to actually dig through it. Um, and that's what Claire does for the consortium collection. If you have something, we're happy to help get you started. Um, reoccurring at the advantage level. Um, that's probably not something that we can maintain. Um, so we're helping out with the system. If you wanna turn it on by all means, um, but this is a great kind of workaround. And then once you decide that you add these titles, have to look into it. One of them is probably currently weeded. So it showed up as 199 instead of 200. But say I wanted to pick my publishing location and publish. Within hours, I'm going to have Reese Witherspoon's collection on my homepage. Okay. Um, and then also, I did want to note so if we scroll down, we see all of those titles now. If I wanted to do a custom sort, I can also drag and drop the order of my titles. So if for some reason, I don't know a lot of people that want them in a specific order, but if you do, say it's a series, say you want all authors together, et cetera, you can always rearrange the list of titles before you publish it, okay? Um, I do wanna get into CPC. Any other specific questions about curation? Oh, we do have a couple more questions. Hang on, one second. Okay. So we talked about a resource center. Um, and we're going to talk about CPC in, in just a minute. So thank you for letting me know um, how to kind of remove those CPC titles. Um, we'll get into that in just a minute. Um, another question curated lists will show. Um, Curated items still show up in waitlist, still show up in lists as waitlist when they're metered access and expired. Is there a way to, um, is there any easy way to see if a title is on an existing list that has at least one borrowable copy? Um, do you know? I'm trying to, do you mean from marketplace, um, like the website and the end user side of things? David, I think this was your question from Marketplace. Um, so once there isn't a way from the shop experience to see if a title is currently in a curated collection. Um, so I think the best option would be something like um, if you go to your organized collection. So this is going to show you all currently published lists. You have a few options. Um, a little pencil means to edit this that we're going to look at in a second. As I mentioned, you can drag and drop to rearrange the order. That's another great way. Say you don't have time every month to create new lists, just move them around. Um, sometimes if they're more general, if you are doing seasonal topics, we do recommend trying to get them out of there in a seasonable manner. We always find winter reads around in the summer, et cetera. Um, but if you're doing more general ones, you can just rearrange them and that changes up the interface and helps it out. Um, and X is just to delete the collection. But I think the only way um, to see would be to edit the list. Oh, and all of these are automated. So they probably won't appear a title list. Yeah. The specific titles um, that come in, if it's curated, you would be able to see it. But I don't Claire, that it shows the ownership, like how many copies from the curate tab, does it? Um, sorry, like if you look at the one of the curated lists, like the Armchair Explorer. Oh, oh thank you, this one. Yeah. Okay. And one other thing I'll add to, I think Kristen touched on this, but when you publish a list, it goes to the bottom of the, the list of, of all the curated lists you have automatically. So if you do want to move it to the top, make sure you go under organize and pull it to the top. Otherwise, it goes straight to the bottom so it doesn't interfere with anything else you have. Thank you. Um, and so if it's a curated list, we do include ownership information. So when we kind of combine them here, um, it would represent consortium collection first and then ownership, uh, advantage ownership on the right side of the slash. So I guess you could filter here and see if there's any titles that are kind of zero across the board to determine if they're expired. Um, that 
it's not an easy way by any means, but that is the only way I'm familiar to discover if there's any expired content still in those. Um, another option would be just changing that availability filter and having it be um, only show available titles. And then that way you won't get in any expired ones. Okay. All right. Um, so, and Claire, anything else about curation that I may have forgot? Um, I don't, don't think those are the big ones. I saw a question in chat of if you could curate with um, shelf talkers, I think. Let's see. Did I make that up? Oh, yeah. Um, is there shelf talkers? I don't believe so not an automated list but if you go under advanced search you can see what titles have active shelf talker status inactive shelf talker status etc and um it's still technically a curated list but it's a quicker process than hand picking shelf talkers you can get you know like the way we sorted that reese's book club list you can filter out to everything that has shelf talkers active and then add those all to a cart so it wouldn't be an automated list technically, but it is a fairly quick curated list. Um, and that's uh, a great point that I wanted to dive back into. So advanced search, another way besides just taking into account searching individual titles or um, using a resource center, you can use the advanced search. Um, you can filter just as you do for um, deciding what to purchase, um, except with curation, it's gonna filter for things you already own but maybe you want to um, just look for, you know, adult fiction, audiobooks, and you can put in the release date and make it last year or something like that. But there is that shelf talker status. So you can put um, active. So in this case, it's going to pull results with active shelf talkers. Um, I don't think this library has any, so I'm not going to include that there. Um, but then you have the option, so I said, release date, maybe you can type it in or you can pick last year. So maybe I'm making a collection of 2022 adult fiction reads. Um, so I'm going to put release dates of last year and then I'm going to go ahead and hit search. And hopefully I'm still in the curate tab and didn't click out of it. <laughs> Okay, I am. So um, currently there's 143 titles, adult fiction, audiobooks that were published in 2022, but I can use those filters on the side. Maybe I just want to pick certain subjects, et cetera, narrow it down. Um, pick something. I don't know, classic literature. I don't think classic literature was published last year, but. See. Um, there's seven, there's seven results. So, um, but if I wanted to narrow that down, I can always apply it and then select all, or rather than selecting all, you can also just on an individual title basis, you can batch select titles or next to each title, you can hit add to main list. So similarly, add to cart when you're purchasing, add to main list when you're curating. Okay. And completely free feature, nothing you have to do, but as part of a consortium, it is a way to individualize yourself a little bit, um, gear some things specifically to your home users, um, especially, you know, with very different areas, different demographics, things like that. What might be popular amongst one community is not amongst the other. So it gives you an opportunity um, to kind of put a little bit more specific um, for your home users. And some advantage libraries like to um, title things, you know, specifically for, you know, Nyack Library patrons or whatever it may be. Um, you could be a little bit more specific about it, especially if you're doing something like um, CPC that's not available to be shared. You can say, um, I think Valley Cottage did that. They did banned books for Valley Cottage patrons only or something like that. Um, so that's a really great idea. Um, and then another option too, as we're talking about uh, CPC, which we'll get into in just a second, um, you can also do an advanced search just for that lending model. If you wanted to curate a collection of titles that you've enabled as CPC, you can do that. I'm gonna, I think I cleared out the rest of the filters. So. I want to hit CPC. I don't know if this library has any. Can I ask a question? 
please. So in order to find a CPC, you have to purchase them first and then go in and then pan pick them, right? Kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. So um, curation only results in things already in the collection. Um, okay. So yes, you would have to enable them as CPC. Or if it's something like, I don't think the system has played around with CPC, but because your patrons have access to that pool collection too, even if you didn't as the Advantage collection, it may pull in those um, RCLS titles if they had CPC. Okay. In yeah, that, um, I think I would, I would use those, um, that maybe like one of those collection uh, development resources list and kind of maybe loose it as, as a guide and then go purchase and then make exactly. something up. <laughs> exactly, and the nice thing is, um, if we're comfortable with curating, I will move into CPC unless there's any outstanding questions. Oh, um, we were gonna talk about shelf talkers a little bit while we were on curation. So shelf talkers are something that we rolled out with last week um, and they're really to kind of mimic um, your physical branch. So some libraries like to put little notes or staff recommendations or other things on a specific title. And we really wanted to mimic that in the digital space. We want your overdrive collection to be a continuation of your physical collection. Um, so pulling in some of those same resources that you're using there. So um, for example, let's talk about this lessons in chemistry here. Um, we have the option right above, um, and this is whether you're in the curate tab, you can also do it from the main homepage as you're selecting titles. Um, we have this shelf talker. And you have a few options. Um, right now you can have it appear as a recommendation, just a thought, some put a little comment or a trivia. One of our local um, libraries did a funny thing. If you've ever saw the memes or things on social media, you know, he's a 10, but, and then some giant red flag. Um, so they did that for different books. Um, they had one, um, or do you know what I'm talking about? Maybe you helped with this. Um, there were some examples that were funny. Ones like um, Fifty Shades, like he's a 10, but he has some control issues or um, some other little quirky things just to help do a little promotion of a title or get people wanting to read it. So it could be anything. Um, I think a lot of libraries tend to use it for staff recommendations, um, especially if you have you know, that space in your physical branch. If people know Donna's picks of the week or something like that, bring that into Overdrive, bring that into your digital collection um, or um, promotion. So um, Brooklyn Public Library has their own podcast and it's often like book reviews and things like that. So we did some shelf talkers of books discussed in their podcast. Um, so they put a little note on a title. It may see you could say like, as heard on NPR, if you don't want to do a full curated collection, you can still put a note on a title. Um, for Advantage accounts, it is only going to be shown to your Advantage users. It can be at the consortium or Advantage level, um, but it's just like a little note on a title, a little shelf talker, a whisper, etc. cetera. Um, and you can put anything. So say I'm going to do a recommendation, Donna loves this whatever it may be. Um, another great thing is that you can schedule a note. Say you're having a program at the library. You can say for the month of February, have it say this month's book club pick meet on Tuesday the 15th or whatever it may be. Um, so I think you have about 300 characters or so, but anything, and this would appear as the title does. I'm gonna pull up an example so you can see what it looks like. But I love being able to schedule a note. Um, so that way it's only being, you know, um, advertised for this certain time. And you can also attribute the note. So definitely if you're doing a staff pick, let them know who's pit, right? Um, so you could put their name, you could put what branch they're at, something like that. You can even put their little headshot or a picture of it. So again, taking things that maybe they're used to seeing in the physical branch, bringing it into digital. Um, I'm gonna pull up real quickly and show you um, some that are on Brooklyn. Let me see. 
Kristen, I was just asking as like with curation, they can just do curation. Can there be staff that just does shelf talkers? So yeah, shelf talkers is actually the same curate permission. So if they have access to just curate, um, that'll include shelf talkers or the actual you know, collections, but they don't have to purchase, they don't have to see reporting, invoices, any of that good stuff. Um, and then, oh, I clicked on the wrong thing. Let me see if I can find a book. Okay, so this one. Um, oh, I'm not in Libby. Um, I will say Shelf Talkers um, is only up here in Libby. Um, so I apologize for forgetting that. Um, you can see my own Libby bookshelf. Let me go to oh, blank it out, blank it out. Sure. <laughs> okay, Brooklyn. And I went off my podcast. You don't have to see what I'm doing. I'm just looking for a specific title. Um, okay. So in this case, um, my shelf talker is right at the top here. As I mentioned, Brooklyn has a podcast, so they wanted to highlight which books were talked about in which episodes. So um, it's just a little Disclaimer, it says this book was recommended by these two staff members. We talked about it in the podcast, season three, episode two, you know, and they put their podcast hosts as the recommendation. But um, just a cool way to, you know, put a little note on a title to build that human interaction. So something that they might not be getting if they're checking out digitally and they're missing out on all the good things you're doing in your physical branch or talking to an actual staff member, et cetera, this helps you pull that in. So they can still know who Donette Newberg is, you know, and still know what she's reading, even if I may be missing out on some of the conversations with her firsthand. Okay. Um, okay. So back to this, back to CPC. Um, any other outstanding questions about shelf talkers? Um, somebody, somebody asked, where can we see the privacy policy on uploaded images to shelf talkers? Mm, I think that it's probably in our general overdrive policy. So um, overdrive.com and likely at the bottom under our privacy policy, but I'll look for specifics um, and follow up on that. And then somebody asked, how can we assign staff to be curators only? Sure. So from your marketplace account, you actually have access to create other advantaged marketplace users. So under the admin tab, you have marketplace users. Um, again, you'll only be able to add your own advantage users. They won't be able to see a consortium collection. If you needed that, you can contact us or our CLS admin to organize that. But in this case, I'm in um, Albert Weisner's account. They have two um, advantage users. Um, Laura, sorry to pick you guys up. Um, so it's just top of the list. Um, but you do have an <laughs> option. You can go ahead and hit add user. And you could bulk upload them, but I doubt you're adding 50 plus users. Um, but really, all you need is a name and an email address. And then when you go down to permissions, um, because it's Advantage account, there's certain things that are limited to just Advantage, um, but it would just be this curate permission. And that would include the curation as well as shelf talkers. So if you want, um, you can include create view cards that would allow them to perform more general searches if they wanted to see what they don't have, et cetera. Um, obviously purchase, would allow them to purchase. If you clicked that, you would have to, um, it defaults to your billing account, et cetera. Um, but curate is that permission that they need for both shelf talkers and collections, okay? Um, so that's kind of editing your advantage users. Um, okay, so with what little time we have left, I just wanna touch base on um, CPC. So I do wanna note we are we're working on kind of combining them into one shop view, but for now, CPC is kept a little separate just because it works a little differently. So under the left-hand side of Marketplace, the shop tab right before Insights, you can drop down to cost per circ. It is the top option. Again, 
We're working on it. We'll have it in one view soon, but it's separate for now. Um, you can click on class purser. Um, and Claire and her team of staff librarians have highlighted um, a few. This is rotating, but we do a few of the top uh, ebooks, audiobooks, um, book club picks great nonfiction, and then some of the cheapest of the cheap, you know, there are some titles that are available for 30 cents a checkout, et cetera. So um, a little bit different about um, CPC versus regular shopping experience is you don't build a cart. Um, all you do is actually add CPC title or revoke CPC title. Um, similarly to purchasing a cart, it does take we say up to 24 hours for that access to become available, probably within about four or so. Um, but you are, rather than building a cart, just doing add CPC title. Um, one thing that I think is great, which I especially with Advantage users think most of them use it for, is to help offset some of those holds or things that might not already be in the collection. Um, so if you're looking for a certain title, um, you can sort, uh, scan down the home page or use this. I recommend an advanced search. And you can also, which is really great. So um, CPC, we only have it in our eBooks and audiobooks, magazines is um, simultaneous use. But if you wanted to filter by, you know, an audience, a subject, whatever it may be, I'm going to, um, another great thing too, if you have, say you love using the current holds report and you want to look at things there, you could also export and copy and paste 200 ISBNs in here. Or if you're using it off another list or search or things like that. Um, so you could do up to 200 ISBNs or 75 title IDs. I will admit, I think you could do more than 75, but for some reason we promote 75. Um, so if you were to paste, you know, 100, the search is still going to work and pull back all those results. I typically recommend using title IDs over ISBNs. I think you get more exact um, and accurate search results. Um, sometimes publishers, I feel like, can duplicate ISBNs or, or things like that, um, but I recommend, you know, title ID if you could help it, but they both work great. Um, but in this case, I'm just going to scroll down and do minimum advantage hold. So I just want to see what is available in CPC that my patrons currently have on hold. So I'm just going to do minimum one. And then I can sort, um, maybe I want to sort it by hold. So I want to do it by the number of holds. Um, an option is to save. So I'm going to say one plus hold and you can pin it. I promise I will remove these, Laura. Um, and then you can hit save, and then you can run your search. And we'll go back and see that pin search in a second. <coughs> but there's over 430 titles currently available in simultaneous use that my patrons have. So first one, which is a great one, um, spare. I will say new releases of Penguin Random House, they're going to be more expensive. They're going to be $5.50 for an ebook and $9.50 for an audiobook, but it's cheaper than $55 if you only have a couple patrons waiting. I will say with cost per cert, it's a sweet spot. If you have maybe under five patrons waiting, it's not enough to justify purchasing another copy Cost per cert is a great way to kind of fulfill those holds without committing, buying another 12 month copy, et cetera. If you have a lot, um, I probably don't recommend CBC. Maybe purchasing something, it depends on your goals. If you wanna get through the wait list faster, by all means, um, but they can, those CPC titles can get fulfilled pretty quickly. Um, so the great thing too about CPC, an end date. So what some libraries do is they may add a title as CPC, wait for holds to be fulfilled, and revoke it within the week or three days from now. The patrons are still going to have it for the remaining of their loan period, um, but no you, new users might build. So um, another thing that I'll note is you can't add CPC titles can't circulate unless you set a budget. So in this case, you can either set a budget here. If you haven't set one yet, you'll be prompted to do that when you go to add a title. Um, from the home page, it's also on the left-hand side. So CPC 
Um, budgets are based on a calendar month, so they will reset for the amount that you set on the first of the month. They are also um, set by format, not by individual title. I will admit this is sometimes a pain point. I wish it was built differently, but it's set by format. So if you add 10 ebooks in CPC, your $50 ebook budget is going to go to all 10 of those titles. Okay, so you can't, the only way that a specific CPC budget for a specific title is to have that be the only CPC title in that format. Okay, so there isn't a way to set a budget for format that will go across all of your safe CPC titles. Um, and as I mentioned, the only option here is to add CPC title. Say I wanted to add all of these. I can select all and hit add CPC titles. Um, or you can do it on a title by title basis. So you can scroll down this list and handpick certain ones, or you can just hit the button under the title. So choice is yours. It is a little bit more, um, I don't know if complicated is the right word, but rather than creating a cart because you do have to handpick a little bit more, but because each checkout can result in a fee, you know, we want to be sure that you know what you're adding in this lending model. Um, it's a little bit different than purchasing, you know, a one copy one user metered access title. Um, and then let me find, I want to find you an example of a title that may already be a CP. We're just about time. Um, I am going to follow up with some follow up resources. I will say too that same resource center um, that um, says I'm unstable. Better? Am I back? You're okay. okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I get worried every time I see it. So, um, and now I lost my train of thought. Oh, that resource center where great ideas for um, what to buy or curated collections. Um, what was I going to say? Nope. And it also has lists of CPC content that you might search there. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> they open it searches. Possibly. Um, I don't know why this is coming up. Um, let me try to. Just looking for one that has a different. Um, so another opportunity, let me go back to the CPC homepage just to show you that my save search is here. So I don't have to come back every time and see what CPC titles I have on hold. Um, you can also filter for things you've already added. Um, advanced search, you can put in those ISBNs or other things. Um, let me see. Laura, you're on this call. Do you know if a title that you have is CPC by any chance? Me? Yeah. Oh, if not, um, that's okay. Do we have a CPC? I'm just trying to, it's something on the bestseller list. I'm just trying to think. That's okay. Another option too with the holding or uh, with the advanced search on the CPC page to see what you have currently enabled oh. as CPC, right? So under the holdings, you could go down and in this case, it would be advantage owned as CPC. So okay. this will result in a list of titles you currently have enabled. Forgot about this, but so that's a great way. And then I just wanted to show you what it looks like. Um, once you have hit that add CPC, um, you will see the revoke button. And in this case, they have set it to automatically revoke on the first of the month. So they just want it to be available for the next couple of weeks. Great idea to help get those holds moving. We have Michelle Obama's new book. Um, you know, maybe it's for a book club and it's a little bit later. So um, I love that you guys. I usually do it. For, I usually do it for two months. Perfect. I do based on the New York Times bestseller. That's what I usually do. I love that. Um, yeah. I think that's a really great idea. And then otherwise, if you didn't set a schedule, it would just say revoke and you can manually turn that off at any time. Um, same thing. We say it could take within 24 hours to be removed. Um, but the option is once you added a CPC, the only option is to really revoke it. Um, and you can either do that manually or you can set it to be revoked on a certain day. So I have a quick question again. So to find that list, because I was always trying to figure out that list, you go into the cert advanced search. Yeah. So you're on the cost per search homepage. Okay. You can go to advanced search. 
and near the bottom, once it loads, on the left-hand side, holdings, and you want to filter down for advantage owned as CPC. Right. Thank you. So that's going to find you. And this could also be saved as a search. So that way, I'm going to just do that. So owned as CPC. We're going to save it. And now if we go back to the home page. Now it's just on the left hand side for you. So you don't have to do that advanced search. Next time you come in, you can click that and it'll automatically pull up. Okay. So I'll leave that one and delete the holds one. Um, Anything, um, main things, CPC, since we're a little over time, I'm going to follow up with a bunch of resources. We can talk about this at the next one. I think it's a really great opportunity, especially for Advantage libraries, because you're only financially responsible for your own patrons, and it is a really great idea, especially if, you know, once a title expires, maybe there's only one or Of course we lose her now, <laughs> but if there's only one or two left, you might want to just do a CPC on it. And just, if it's an older title or whatever. Oh, I really, am going really to have to end this soon. I'm, um, I'm on the desk, I apologize. So um, I'm hoping she comes back so we can, can exit gracefully. <laughs> But I hope you all found it useful and um, you know we'll try we'll try and meet again soon. I'll say like on I behalf said, of Kristen, thanks for having us. <laughs> yes. I, I, I think that um I think it was a really good thing that we divided up the advantage from people who are just learning and um, learning how to do cards, et cetera, and then people who have been um, it's you know at a more advanced level. And we're all at different stages. So um Kristen, thank you. Thank you. I made it so close. It was my computer telling me it was after four. <laughs> you did. Thank you so much, Kristen, Claire. And thank you, everyone, for showing up. I appreciate it. Um, I'm going to end the meeting. And we'll have some follow-up material. And um, take care, everyone. Be thank well. you. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs>